All right, everyone, thanks for coming. <clears throat> I think it's, we're good to get started. Um, thanks for coming over to this room and making the switch. Good to see so much interest in pedestrian mapping, and I think it's quite, uh, quite representative of what we have seen and kind of what I'm here to talk about today, which is the interest in pedestrian mapping that we've seen in the United States over the last few years. So my name is Eduardo, I'm here uh, on behalf of Meta today talking about what we're doing with sidewalk mapping, footways, footpaths, whatever you call them in your neck of the woods. And this particular project is called the Walkabout Project. Walkabout, I just thought it was a cool term, it actually comes from the indigenous people in Australia when they go on a journey of self-discovery, a coming of age journey. So not completely related to what we're doing with footways, but it sounds cool and we want to help you walk about by mapping sidewalks. So this is Meta's efforts to map America's sidewalks and crosswalks. We're gonna go through these seven things and hopefully have some good questions at the end. But just to recap, uh, last year I spoke about, kind of before this had even kicked off, why we're interested in pedestrian mapping. We were just getting started. And we spoke about AR as being uh, a really exciting new technology that's gonna need pedestrian data. And we talked about how historically maps just have not had pedestrian data, particularly, uh, well, OpenStreetMap is one of them, but all the maps that you're probably using as a consumer, they've been very car-centric. And we heard all trails talking about trails, trying to do uh, what they're doing to put trails on the map. Sidewalks is kind of um, still neglected and, and we've seen that in the data and so we're, we're kind of going through step by step in different cities trying to fill in those gaps. So spoke about this last year, spoke about this in a personal capacity uh, a few years before that, just finding it really interesting how much sidewalks change city to city, um, different policies, even neighborhood to neighborhood. And then here we are, uh, obviously a year later, we've started to map, but we still see some large gaps. So it might be hard for you to see on the screen here, but I've got just three different examples from the great, uh, actually they're not all in Utah, they're, they're in this, this time zone though, you could say. And uh, the first one on the left, does anyone know where this is? That's here, yeah, it really well mapped, unsurprisingly. Um, all the sidewalks seem to be there, trails, you can route on it, it's fantastic. Then in the middle, can anyone see? It's probably a pretty tough one. We might actually have someone who lives here at the conference. Someone seems like she's gonna guess. No, this is Ogden, so not too far from here. It looks like they actually have a lot of sidewalks, but they're just not completely mapped yet. So you can see, like, even though I'm showing you the center of the city, there are so many sidewalks where the individual ways have not been mapped. And then on the right-hand side, you have, I don't think anyone will get this. This is uh, Colorado City. Does anyone know which state Colorado City is in? Yeah, too good. This is my coda. He's the number one pedestrian mapper in the United States. <laughs> yeah, Colorado City, very weird place. Not many sidewalks, but that's another presentation for another time and another conference. So yeah, we've got imagery coming in from these places too. Martin Van Exel, the, uh, the king of Salt Lake City, thank you for your contributions. This is what Ogden looks like. We have the Ogden uh, GIS department contributing, or at least they did a few years ago. That's fantastic. And then um, I think I was the first in Colorado City, and maybe the last, we'll see. So what have we done? We've been mapping sidewalks with the community. I'll tell you how we did that, but just to start with the metrics, we've added, 235 kilometers of crosswalk ways, which maybe doesn't sound like much, but we're talking about crosswalk ways, which when you add it up, that's a lot. Um, for the metrically challenged, that's 146 miles and 17,000 crossing ways, or 17,920 nodes, because a lot of the data that was added were, were nodes, and, and you know, not everyone is, is mapping the way as well. As far as sidewalks, uh, 1,250 miles, 27,832 ways, and that just keeps going. And so you can see here from it, like a data contribution point of view, if you drill down on what's being done on sidewalks, there's a really big increase. So I just wanna give um, you know, a recognition to the community for that contribution and uh, 
it's hard for me to clap for you right now, but a clap to all the contributions for pedestrian mapping. So that's the length of crosswalks uh, added to Meta, and then the graph looks very similar, or the chart looks very similar for sidewalks added. And a huge spike earlier in the year, uh, that was actually a lot of New York. The New York's have been a city that we've been trying to map for a long time. It's just, we chose a huge area, there's so much to do. Uh, but Chad Blevins, uh, I think he's in the room, he did a great job engaging youth mappers and the youth mappers community, and that's all the contribution of youth mappers, that, that massive spike. So thanks to them as well, um, and the, the young people of the United States mapping sidewalks. So as I said, um, shout out to the mappers. Number one mapper, Mike Coda here in, uh, in Phoenix. Um, a bunch of others, as you see, youth mappers really well represented there. And uh, we hope to see more people on that list. We actually had hundreds of people participating, some just making a few edits, some making many edits, as you can see here. But this is really what it takes to move the needles on sidewalks. We've seen roads added over many years through Tiger imports and manual editing. Uh, and, and kind of this is the next frontier, I think, for all of us. So we'll be mapping in Miami. They have like beautiful, crisp imagery there. That's a great place to map. We need help there. You can see there's still a lot to do. New York City, it's all, it's all done as far as the mapping, but we do need validation help. Um, so we've been working on that for quite a while. Um, thanks to the youth mappers contributions, that, that huge area is done. And that's actually missing a section. There's some parts of Manhattan that aren't done. But this was a lot of Brooklyn now, has sidewalks individually mapped. So if you want to get out an app like uh, OSM and and try routing in New York. You can see whether you're actually getting routed on the sidewalks rather than the uh, on the road. Phoenix and, and Tempo, uh, thanks to Mike Coder and many others, this is uh, this is looking almost done, and uh, the map time chapter in Los Angeles as well was 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 another place. Um, that's that's kind of a, a lot more to do there in Los Angeles though, and then DC. DC was another huge area. We didn't do the, the, the downtown area because that had already been mapped really well. So we try to focus on the areas that we know are missing sidewalks. Uh, DC, we ran a workshop there, um, had some good turnout. We saw like a lot of enthusiasm for, from bicycle advocacy groups, from uh, local NGOs that care about accessibility. So uh, yeah, you can see WABA there, um, which Chad, do you know what that stands for? Washington? There you go. So. Um, I think more groups like that are great partners because they already care about accessibility. And then another thing that we're doing, so I've spoken a bit about like engaging people. We create these projects in Map with AI. Um, sorry, we create these, yeah, the tasking manager is called Map with AI, and we get people to contribute using Rapid Editor, which I'll speak about in a bit. And the other thing that we're doing is setting up ML generated crosswalks, which I think Saeed and Yunzi talked about yesterday. Um, but this is where we predict the location of crosswalks in aerial imagery, and then we see those two map roulette, the fantastic tool um, to then get people to review. Are these ML generated crosswalks actually there in reality? Sometimes it can be very hard to see. So you can see here in this image, there's, uh, we've detected a crosswalk there, or at least the ML algorithm has. But if you look at aerial imagery, it's, it's really hard to see. Philadelphia has some really uh, worn out sidewalks. And, and crosswalks, and so the, the lines are often faded. But sure enough, with the help of Bing imagery in this case, you can actually confirm that there is a zebra crossing there. And so we're going through systematically and adding those, and then this is part of the feedback loop to make the algorithm better. So in this case, we're telling it it was correct. So our mapping toolkit, what are we using to do this? We're using a, a range of tools that really speaks to the fantastic uh, open source tooling community um, and, and everything that's been built over the last 10 years. Rapid Editor, which is um, being developed by Ben and Brian on the, on the Meta team, um, very performant. It's browser-based, which means people don't have to download anything. It's always up to date. Pedestrian validation checks are built in, which has been really helpful when you're mapping a sidewalk. Maybe you've forgotten to connect it to anything. Um, often that's a common thing. People are mapping a sidewalk, they don't connect it to roads or, or other sidewalks. Um, this tells them, hey, you've made a mistake or you haven't, are you sure about this? Do you want to connect it? So that's really useful. Now there's a map roulette integration as well. Um, has anyone used map roulette here? Hands up if you have. That's, that's fantastic. That speaks to the power of that community. Um, so an interesting stat, I think, 
I heard recently, we were looking through like how many of the map roulette tasks or challenges are completed by community versus people who are paid to do it. I think it was 80%, Yunzi, is that right? That's an incredible contribution. So 80% um, of map roulette tasks completed by community. And so now what Ben and Brian have done is integrated that into Rapid. So if you're browsing the map, you can see, hey, there's a task here to do. And that's something we really wanted to solve with Rapid because people don't know often what they want to do. They, open, they know they want to map, but they don't know where to map or what to map. This kind of gives some guidance there. You can see what's in your area. Uh, and then we have uh, ML and open data sets integrated into Rapid, keyboard shortcuts. Esri Wayback imagery is really cool. So thanks to Esri for that, being able to check. And this was another issue we saw where like, there were times where I added a crosswalk in New York, and then someone actually told me that that aerial imagery is wrong and that since then, for whatever reason, the city of New York has removed it. Um, this is where local knowledge is really helpful, but also having Esri Wayback imagery to go and compare over time helps to, to work out why a mapper has done what they've done. I mentioned map with AI. Uh, hands up, sorry again, I need to do the hands up so we know how much attention we're getting on this project, but map with AI is, uh, hands up if you're familiar with it, first of all, and then keep your hand up if you've actually used it. Yeah, not as good as Map Roulette. So Martin's doing a better job on promotion than we are. Um, so this is a tool for the, the tasking side of things. Map Roulette's great if you have a small area or a, like a node that you want to add to OpenStreetMap. But if you want to do large contributions, uh, sidewalks is a good example. You want to make sure there aren't conflicts between people mapping. You want coordinated editing, detailed instructions, um, stats and gamification. This is where Map with AI has been super useful for us. And we can track progress. We can get people to go in and validate and just ensure the quality of that data that's getting added. And then it also, Map Roulette does this too, but we have the change set comments, which is really useful going back into the stats and seeing who completed the New York uh, Mapathon challenge. And we can just search all the change sets using the OSM char API and, and see you know, the length of sidewalks that were added, number of crosswalks, et cetera. And I think underrated going into this project was just how much we need street level imagery. This is one of the bottlenecks right now. Mapler is an essential source of ground truth data. And often there's tree obstructions that make aerial imagery difficult. There's, um, it's also just good to have a different point in time to, to reference. Uh, traffic signals are uh, often hard to see. So is this a protected crossing? Are there actually designated traffic signals telling pedestrians to cross? and uh, being able to check overpasses, et cetera, and, and the type of crosswalk that exists there. So uh, we're trying to get more people to contribute. I'm gonna talk about that later today, the, the Maplery Camera Grant Program, um, which is a way that you can contribute. But I think if you do have a smartphone, this is a really good way to help other mappers to add sidewalks. And then we are able to derive sidewalks with machine learning as well. And, and that's gonna be another layer that we can add to Rapid so that you can just more quickly add a, a sidewalk layer. I mentioned Map Roulette already, but yeah, systematic way to get data into OSM, really clear progress meter of how we're going with adding a particular data set to OpenStreetMap. There's the API, which makes, us, uh, makes it very easy for us to set up challenges. And as we saw from the hands in the room, it's an incredibly active community, which is really important if you're trying to collectively finish a project. So I guess lessons learned, we're gonna continue with this. Um, Chad's been hard at work over the last few months of like trying to work out what we do next, where we focus next. Um, I think smaller projects is one lesson that we had. We tried to map this huge area in New York and it's, it's kind of demoralizing just seeing how you, you complete these tasks and you go, you check away at, you chip away at them and you feel like you've been mapping for days and then you still, you've only done like 1%. So I think from a psychological point of view, smaller tasks, um, just keeping the projects tighter in scope. Um, we'd love your suggestions. If you know your area is really poorly mapped with sidewalks, please let us know. We can create um, tasks for you, try to get people engaged around them. That's the second point, local knowledge is important. And then the Pareto principle, which is true in any open street map community or uh, open source community, um, someone like Makoda, Makoda can make, uh, or Sean, as he's known in his day-to-day -day life, um, can make a huge contribution. So that's super cool to see how much one person can make a difference in their city. Uh, validation checks are important. Street level imagery, I mentioned that, super essential. Organizational partners are really helpful. You saw that like the impact that YouthMap has had on that, that huge spike on the graph. 
uh, Beta New York City in New York City, Arizona State University, and there are many others. Uh, your organization could be there, so, so thanks to all those organizations. And open data is out there, but there are issues with licensing, data quality, review. It's hard to get the right file format sometimes, and uh, there are obstacles to hosting. There's quite a process to, to get that data. But if you have data in your city for sidewalk mapping, um, speak to us and we can look at getting that into Rapid. And if you'd like to get involved, there's the OpenStreetMap US Pedestrian Working Group, which uh, you can speak to Chad, hands up. If you want to learn more about this pedestrian working group as part of OSM US, uh, you can email us at osm at meta.com um, and then participate in the camera grant program, which I'll speak about at 2.15 today in the Alpine Room, where we give out cameras, 360 cameras. And then if you actually want to do what this is all about, which is literally map a sidewalk, Miami is a great place to start. Um, you can go on vacation from your desktop to Miami. Uh, really good imagery there and there's still a lot of sidewalks to be mapped. I don't see anyone scanning the QR code, but I can, I can send this out later, it's all good. <laughs> Same thing with Phoenix, and uh, we'll send this information out for those, or t put it out on threads, whoever wants to uh, participate. So thank you to the community we've worked with on this project, and thanks to the faces here that have done a lot of like, the back-end work to make this possible, um, a lot of the data analysis, a lot of the machine learning, uh, quite a few of them are in the room. Uh, those in the room, maybe hands up if you, if you want to speak to them. Uh, you can find any of these people when they know a lot about sidewalk mapping. And I'll leave that up there for those that want to connect. But thanks for listening. I'm happy to talk pedestrian mapping over the next uh, 24 hours while I'm here. And there's a long way to go. We've barely scratched the surface. This is really important for accessibility. So thanks for listening and uh, hope to see you on a sidewalk soon. Go and walk about. Cheers.